I exposed an email server to the public internet to see how many cyber criminals would try and hack into it. The catch is, the email server is fake. First things first, I created a computer in the cloud. I bought a cheap domain name so that it was publicly accessible as http youremailonline.com. Then I installed the software. And this is super easy. It's a small application written in the Python scripting language. You can find it online with the link below, and big thanks to the user Joda32 who created this and made it available. The program is called OWA Honeypot. OWA stands for Outlook Web Application, like Microsoft Outlook, the program that a lot of people and businesses use to check their email, just on the web. And a honeypot is a sort of digital trap. It's a trick, a fake program or environment to make a hacker think that they're targeting a real application. But in reality, I can track everything they do. This honeypot is really simple. All it does is present a login page for their email and ask the user for their username and password. Behind the scenes, I get to capture their IP address, when they tried to log in, and of course, their username and password. And for the user, nothing happens. After someone tries to log in with their username and password, it just brings you right back to the form. Using a honeypot like this is a concept that a lot of people call cyber deception. It's all to try and fool your adversaries, so they waste their time, and defenders have an opportunity to detect and respond to a potential cyber security incident. And you get a bit of insight as to what the hackers are doing, or what they try. Brute forcing passwords, trying to find valid usernames or email addresses, anything. Hackers constantly go after anything that looks like a login page, because it's an easy target. They can automate a lot of the login attempts. In fact, there's a tool called Hydra that hackers can use to rapidly try one username and password combination, and then another, and then another, and another, and another, and thousands of these over and over and over again as fast as possible. They're just running through a list of potential usernames, email addresses, or passwords, and that is called brute forcing. Another tool called Zap or the Z attack proxy makes it super easy to do these automated brute force attacks. You can just type in a URL and click attack. But here's the thing. With our honeypot, we can see all the logs or records and entries as to who tried what. And remember, all of this is on the open internet. You can just go to youremailonline.com with your web browser like Firefox or Google Chrome. And whichever program you use, your web browser has a unique identifier. It has a kind of fingerprint or a signature that's included in the data that's sent to the website. This is called the user agent header within the HTTP protocol. And that's the hypertext transfer protocol that's used by the whole internet for website communication. But when hackers use automated tools like Hydra or Zap, that user agent data might be an indicator of their own attacks. So if we look back in the logs of our Honeypot website, we can see some connections made from Firefox or Google Chrome or even those attack tools like potentially curl or Python requests. That is an identifier that cyber defenders can key off of to detect these automated brute force attacks or scanning. System administrators, network engineers, or security practitioners can add rules to their firewall to block or try to prevent connections made from these clients. Now, smart hackers can easily change their own user agent header, but for the most part, they don't even bother. I mean, seriously, who's gonna look at their logs? Well, you should. Take a look, that zap tool literally includes the user agent zap colon zap. That is definitely an easy and obvious thing to hunt for. So, I made this fake honeypot email website about a week ago. Let's find out how many hackers tried to break in, where did they come from, what kind of clients or tool were they using, and what usernames and passwords did they try. And by the way, everything I've been doing in this video is something that you can find and follow along with from a guide online. This is actually a free exercise from John Strand, the owner at Black Hills Information Security, Anti-Siphon Training, Wild West Hacking Fest, and so many other incredible organizations. This is an activity from some of their active defense and cyber deception course that's part of their pay what you can training. And seriously, it is pay what you can. You get to choose the price tag. You can pay as much or as little as you want for their courses and education. If you'd like to learn a whole lot more about cyber deception and a great introduction to cybersecurity, check out their pay what you can training with the link below. You can get fantastic cybersecurity training at whatever cost makes sense to you.
Now, it's been about a week, and I gotta be honest, the first day or two, really, there was no action on the honeypot. No one seemed to connect to it, no one seemed to enter any credentials, it just wasn't found on the internet. So, I thought, I'm a little impatient, and I put it out on Twitter, so that the community could know that it exists and try to interact with it. Now we have a ton of logs to look through, so let's go check it out. I've gone ahead and redacted the last two octets, or just those final ending numbers in every IP address. It's not a big deal if an IP address is out there, that's just how the internet works, but I thought it would be good to do if just for courtesy. Right away, we see some really interesting hits from Nmap. Hey, connections from that command line tool, the network mapper that's oftentimes used to scan for open ports or services accessible on the internet. And that is super easy to identify because it just has the user agent Nmap scripting engine by default. There are a couple logs here that look like they came from a different endpoint, just a different location on the website, but not naturally the login form where they type in a username and password. This might have been just basic HTTP authentication, something that's included in the headers of different connections. But it's really kind of wild to see all the different usernames and password pairings, the credentials that they've entered. Oh, and this is totally a password brute force. You can see just about every second there's a new hit, new entry, admin just trying with a different password, guess one after the other, all from that same IP address, 108.18. And you know what? It's pretty hard to look through this log all on its own in its pure form, right? Because there's so much here. There are tons of different entries. And what? We have about 12,000, maybe 12 and a half thousand hits. This is a little overwhelming. So what I've done is just broken these down into more interesting data points, like all the combinations, username and password pairings, credentials that most commonly appeared and folks trying to log in and authenticate. So the most common user username and password tried together, about 764 attempts is user and pass. User being the username, pass being the password, and then 158 attempts of just nothing. No username and no password. There are 11 attempts with administrator as the user and some vulgarity that I've redacted and obscured there. 10 attempts for admin, admin, 8 for root, colon, root, and then a handful of whatever else just comes in. <laughs> This is pretty cool. We get to see some default credentials like Tomcat, Tomcat Secret. There are, of course, a lot of different attempts with admin as the username and any other password that might follow it. Always worth testing the admin account. Administrator in there as well. I appreciate the please subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> And here we can see more of the brute force. Of course, tons of these with the administrator as the username and then whatever passwords it could track down. Oh, uh, what is this? Oh, yep, found the IP address of the server. Yep, DigitalOcean for hosting. And <laughs> we're, we're coming for you, John. Yeah, roger that. <laughs> These ones are interesting because you can see some like attempts for other like template injection libraries or database queries, maybe some SQL, the structured query language in the mix, local file inclusion. Really neat to see all the different payloads that, hey, some threat actors or adversaries might just fire out there. Here's some more brute force with the administrator account. Yeah, tons of these. Look at, uh, I don't know how well you can see over on the right hand side, the vertical scroll bar goes quite a while. Tons of these admin brute force attempts, but hey, we'll get down to the bottom. Maybe there's some fun stuff. <laughs> Big M, good. Little uh, Matt plays games over on YouTube. Appreciate that. Hey, John, I voted for you in the 2016 election. I wrote your name down. Lead us into the future. Oh, okay. Nice try. Totally legit. This is the fun part of, hey, putting that out there for the community. Love the podcast with the PC security channel. Yeah, thanks so much. But of course, who is on the naughty list? Which of these IP addresses would beat up the server and try to access it most frequently? This is the total tally with redacted IP addresses for anything that had a log entry from the honeypot and about 11,000 hits from 73.117. Uh, they were really, uh, really persistent on that one. A couple of others here, but I think we have a total here about, okay, maybe 64 unique IP addresses wanting to go beat that thing up. Most common password was simply just the word pass with 828 attempts, 217 entries with no password supplied, and then the usual that you would expect. And this becomes quite a long, long list, right? Because it's trying everything in those common word list files like rocku.txt, fast track, or any of the others. Usernames on their own, of course, you'd expect to see administrator up there with about 10,000 and 500 attempts with administrator, plenty of others here. And this is when we start to see probably some of the trolling, right? Hey, folks, leave me some messages when they see it out on the internet. But let's chat about those user agents, because again, that's what I want to drive home as an opportunity for you, maybe as a defender, to potentially key off of some malicious attempts or connections against your web server website, even in a honeypot, right? Now, with our data here, I saw mostly genuine real browsers 
browsers. I was a little surprised we didn't see anything come from like curl, that command line utility, or Python requests, maybe scripting things. But of course, we have a hit for Nmap, right? We saw that previously. But just about everything else is either coming from a mobile device or Windows or Linux or anything. Lots of really cool data though. It's always pretty insightful when we put a honeypot out on the internet and just see what happens. Like seriously, we had like almost 13,000 entries in a week, less than that. I hope you create your own honeypot just as well. So what do you think? Would you ever set up a honeypot like this? Or have you ever in the past? Have you done something like an email server or a website where they can log in? I think it's a great effort in cyber deception so that you can waste a hacker's time and you can have more time to defend, to protect, to detect and respond to incidents before they might happen.